One of the most common misconceptions that you might hear from people who have just started working in agile way that there is no proper planning and everything is happening in chaos. I remember when I had my first agile project, I had some similar concerns as well. However, everything changed quite soon once I understood what is behind the scenes. My name is Oris Germanavichus, I'm Agile coach at Danske Bank, and now I'll be giving a second lecture of Danske Uni Agile model about how to do product, project, or other initiative planning in Agile way. You will see that some of the concepts that I will cover could be applied not only for IT software development initiatives in big banks, but also for startups, fintechs, and many more areas. And let's see what I'm going to talk about in this video. And I will cover some concepts of discovery and development diamonds and what is meant by them in Agile world. I will touch upon different phases of discovery diamond and give you some practical techniques on how to approach each of them. Then I will briefly introduce you to iteration planning and its main topics. And finally, give you a short summary with key takeaways. So, the original double diamond model was popularized by the British Design Council in 2005. And it had four phases, discover, define, develop, and deliver. Each phase can be either divergent, which means exploring different possibilities, or convergent, narrowing down options and making choices. It has been popular among many designers and design thinkers use this model to come up with the right solution for the identified problem. And many years have passed since it was introduced, and you can find a lot of different modifications of this model. I have adjusted the model a little bit as well, changed and incorporated additional phases in the process so that it would be more applicable for different end-to-end -end initiatives implementation. You can notice that there is additional phase called refine in the first diamond, while in the second diamond there is a test phase and deliver phase changed to release for those who would like to relate the model more to the IT software development lifecycle or other initiatives. In this video, we will focus mostly on the discovery part and its phases, since many Agile frameworks do not specify how to come up with the backlog items and quite many teams do not know how to build, structure, and prioritize backlog items. As a result, there is a huge risk of building the product or implementing the initiative which doesn't meet customers' needs and therefore a lot of time and money is wasted. I will put more attention to the discovery part where the most of planning activities take place and the work that can be done before the iterative de development starts. Or in other words, we will focus on how to mature the ideas from inception to actual implementation. Usually, the first thing to do is to investigate. To investigate what are the business needs, what are problems you want to solve, what could be the potential business goals, and of course, to analyze existing research and data. In case the product or initiative is completely new, or you are not sure what is the real problem and what could be a potential solution, I would suggest to have a design sprint. But of course, if the problem and solutions are known, then we can skip it and continue with other steps. But let's say that you have a situation when you want to build a brand new product and design sprint is needed. Design sprint is a five-day structured brainstorm based on design thinking and agile development. It was created by Jake Knapp at Google in 2010. Design Sprint helps software development teams to build a low-fidelity coding solutions in just five days. Of course, it is quite a universal model and can be used for other initiatives as well. Let's take a very brief overview of what is happening on each day. Day 1 is mostly dedicated for the interviews and meetings with users or stakeholders, trying to understand what is the real problem that needs to be solved, what are the user needs and the context. Day 2 is when brainstorming is taking place and a lot of ideas are being created and sketched, which could help to solve the problem. During free day, team decides on the best idea and usually starts prototyping. Day 4 is dedicated mostly for prototyping and building walking skeleton of the solution. And day 5 is when testing and collecting feedback takes place. It's basically when you show prototype for end users and learn what works and what needs to be improved. After collecting feedback, it can be decided what are the priorities and next steps. Of course, it is just a very high-level overview of what Design Sprint is. Sometimes it is enough to have only three or four days Design Sprints. In case you are interested or would like to know more, don't hesitate to reach me out. If you would like to improve existing product, 
There are plenty of ways how to investigate what are the pains of the product or solution that you could work on, starting with the simple surveys and interviews. Also, you can organize Gamba sessions, basically when you go through the process together with stakeholders and identify changes needed. Or you can have service blueprint workshops, which is a structured method for designing and talking about the experience of customers with your services. Often these services consist of many different teams and stakeholders behind the scenes. Once you have collected pain points of the existing product, you can start working on sketches and wireframes how the pains could be solved. And last but not least, what I recommend for all teams to do in this phase is to map dependencies. Because quite often dependencies can be biggest roadblockers that can stop the project completely. I will not go into the details because my colleague Carolis will have a whole video dedicated just for this topic, which is called dependency management you need to align to survive. Let's move on. Once the potential solution is investigated, it can be defined. One of the techniques that I usually suggest to do for teams in order to define and at the same time align what needs to be done before it can be actually implemented is a user story mapping. And user story mapping is a method created by Jeff Patton. It helps to align on different perspectives between the business, IT, and other stakeholders. Also, it can be used as a technique for the backlog management. Let's take a closer look of what it is and how it works. User story map consists of several layers. At the top, there is a backbone of activities and action that the end user or persona uh, will be making uh, when using the solution. Basically, it is an area where all the actions are described looking from the end user perspective. For example, let's imagine that you want to build a mobile banking application. The first thing the user would do is open an application, then most probably he or she would have to go through different onboarding steps. All of these actions should be depicted in the backbone of user story mapping. Once we have backbone ready, we can start working on the layers below and start mapping user stories, which will help to implement the solution. Once we feel that we have mapped majority of user stories, we can prioritize them, define what is our MVP of the product and slice it into different releases. Later, it, it can even serve as a backlog management method and tool. If you have not used user story mapping method yet, I can just recommend to try it out because it really helps for most of the teams to align different perspectives and see end-to-end -end scope of the solution. During the define phase, we usually do roadmap and releases planning, only on high level, meaning that we don't invest too much time and resources on this phase. Our goal is to define backlog items for the upcoming one or two iterations so that the team would be able to start development as soon as possible. In order to do so, we have to mature backlog items. And when we feel that some of the user stories or tasks are quite matured, we have to refine them. And refine is the phase when we dig deeper into the backlog items so that they would be ready for the implementation. In Scrum, we aim to prepare backlog items for the upcoming one to two sprints before the iteration planning takes place. Of course, if we have a compliance or regulatory or any other initiative where everything is more or less clear, we can prepare backlog items for even more iterations in advance. Usually teams have a backlog refinement meeting during which team members discuss about tasks and user stories and refine them so that they would meet a set of criteria needed for implementation. And the criteria is called definition of ready, which is basically a checklist of agreed points that team aims to fulfill in order to have backlog items ready for development. Each team can come up with its own definition of ready that can have different types of descriptions, acceptance criteria, and other points that team agrees to follow. In addition, there is invest principle, which helps to align understanding when the backlog items are well prepared. And invest stands for independent, meaning that backlog items should be independent one from another. They should be negotiable, which means that team members should be able to negotiate if some changes are needed. Also, they should be valuable, which means that they should bring value to the end users and the company. Then they should be estimable, meaning that team members should be able to estimate backlog items. And about estimation, I will talk just in a moment. Also, they should small, meaning that uh, they should fit into one iteration or preferable even into half of the iteration. 
and they should be testable, meaning that end users and stakeholders should be able to test it. And there are many debates whether teams should estimate user stories or not. And of course, there are pros and cons in both ways. But if the team is newly formed or, or if it has started to work in Agile way not so much time ago, I always recommend to estimate backlog items, simply because it helps to plan better, uh, to know team's velocity, to be more predictable, to have smoother iteration planning and even less stress. Let's take a closer look into estimation. There are a number of ways how to do it, such as Fibonacci story points, t-shirt sizes, different types of wear glasses, and many more. One of the most popular methods is story points based on Fibonacci sequence, that because it prevents estimates from being too close to one another. When we do estimation, we measure an effort, which is a function of amount of work to do, complexity, risk, and uncertainty. Basically, when we think about the effort, we should take into account these variables. Also, what is very important and takes time for teams to understand uh, that relative size matters, not absolute. And one of the techniques which helps to understand relative concepts better is triangulation. It requires a bunch of backlog items. Team has to identify one small user story or task, one big, and then estimate the rest of backlog items by comparing them to the chosen ones. One more way is to play planning poker. It's when team members have cards consisting of story points, estimate backlog items all together at the same time. In case some people show cards with different values, then the discussion takes place and team members decide what a, is a more precise estimate. This is a very simple yet powerful technique because it helps for team members to align better, to hear different perspectives and understand user story or task better. This brings us back to the discovery and development diamonds. We have already covered discovery part, including investigate, define, and refine phases. And despite the fact that there are a lot of different techniques and methods how to do discovery part, and I have covered only a few of them, overall, it should not take too much time. As soon as we have some backlog items prepared, we should start working with their implementation. In some cases, it could take just one or two weeks in order to go through all the phases in the discovery part and have some backlog items prepared, while for other initiatives, it might take a little bit more time. It really depends on the complexity of the initiative or project. And now let's take a high level overview of the development diamond and how to do iteration planning. Iteration planning is in Scrum is called sprint planning and it is initiated by laying out the work to be performed for the sprint. The product owner, product manager, or even project manager, depending on the organizational structure in the company, ensures that attendees are well prepared to discuss the most important product backlog items and how they map to the product goal. The team may also invite other stakeholders to attend sprint planning to provide advice. And sprint or iteration planning addresses the following topics. Topic number one, why is this sprint valuable? The product owner proposes how the product could increase its value and utility in the current sprint. The whole team then collaborates to define a sprint goal that communicates why the sprint is valuable to the stakeholders. The sprint goal must be finalized prior to the end of sprint planning. Second topic is what can be done in this iteration. Through discussion with the product owner, the team members select items for product backlog to include in the current sprint. The team may refine these items during the process, which increases understanding and confidence. Selecting how much can be completed within a sprint may be challenging, but the more the team members know about their past performance, their upcoming capacity, and their definition of done, the more confident they, they will be in the sprint forecast. And the third topic is how will the chosen work get done? For each selected product backlog item, the team members plan work necessary to create an increment that meets the definition of done. This is often done by decomposing product backlog items into smaller work items of one day or less. How this is done is at the sole discretion of the team members. No one else tells them how to turn product backlog items into increments of value. Sprint goal, 
product backlog items selected for the sprint plus the plan for delivering them are together referred to as sprint backlog. So these are the main topics that we have to cover during iteration or sprint planning. And this brings us to the end of planning in the Agile way video. In this video, we have talked about a double diamond model, the importance of discovery and development parts. I have gone through different phases and techniques in the discovery diamond. Also, we quickly touched upon iteration planning. And last but not least, what I would like to emphasize that we have to be always responding to changes over following the plan. As soon as we notice that the plan needs adjustments, we must take them into account. We have covered quite much material in a relatively short amount of time. In case you would like to learn more or discuss some of the topics in more details, don't hesitate and reach me out. There are my contacts and let's stay in touch.